up fam right back at you with another video and you tuned in to diaspora soldier so i just want to speak about talk about the contradictions that uh fba ados uh, mostly fba because ados really not pushing uh the same xenophobia but you'll get a few that still push that yada that uh the ideology of uh of xenophobia so i want to um talk about the contradictions of um fba Tariq nasheed always saying that uh, people from the diaspora, black people from the diaspora are trying to be black Americans. They come into spaces and they try to fake like they're African, African Americans. Um, and it's to where they make it seem like um, these people come from these other countries and then they try to uh, 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 become black Americans to undermine and then undermine them at the same time. But yet, these, the stay go this, out, out of the same breath. These people will say, FBA in particular, will say that these people they act like they are better than us. They don't want. They act like they don't want to be around us. They act like they don't want to be us. They act like they 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 represent their country, and then they act like they they you know what I'm saying like their country is better. But you know what I'm saying, and that, and that come out in the same breath. You know what I mean, and um, that and that's the contradiction right there. Is that at the same they say that they're trying to be like them, but then turn around and say that they don't want to be them. You know what I mean? They come over here and don't want to. They say they're they rep their country like where you from, and they be like, oh, I'm I'm um um I'm I'm uh, from Congo. I'm from the Congo, or I'm Nigerian. You know what I'm saying? But if you're trying to be Black Americans, wouldn't you say I'm a Black? I'm an African American. You know what I mean? Um, and that that really doesn't make sense to me like on Clubhouse, a lot of the uh, uh, FBA or African-American people that come over there, that come on there and have a debate with Tariq and they're not, um, they, they're not uh, 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 siding with his ideology, they get called a uh, tether or that guy's a tether or you're not a foundational black. Even these dudes are saying, my mom, my grandmother from Mississippi and I'm listening, once he hang up, He'll go. He'll tell his audience, "Oh yeah, see, they try to be like us. You, they, they don't even want to rep where they're from, and you know he that was a tether just because he didn't agree. But then we gotta ask ourselves this question: Why in the hell would people from the diaspora not rep where they from? I mean, what are they getting out of it? What I mean, what what are they getting out of? What what gain would they get by just saying if, if somebody from uh, Jamaica, and then he come on and tell you he's not Jamaican. What does he gain from that? You know what I'm saying? So these guys will make it seem like they tricked their own brain, and they trick and they trick their own brain to make it seem like these other people not try to rep where they from. And we know that people from the diaspora love and they hellify rep where they from to the fullest every time. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to sports, soccer, music, food. All that, all these things, they rep to the fullest. But all of a sudden, they get on Clubhouse and they try to, they faking like they're African American, and they don't want to rep like where they from. And and then, don't you notice that these uh, Tariq Nasheed with his followers, they be trying to shame you from from what they try to do is shame certain people from representing where they from. They try to make it seem like. That's why they have to come with the notion that they're better. They they invented this. They did that. They did this under this under this system. And then we see that other people come from diaspora and also become a superhero in this system because it's not. And I'm not trying to say that black people did uh, the, through the atrocities that black Americans went through. Got to give credit. They did pull out and they did become successful in, at one point. And today we just see a a uh, today we just see a a a. a, um, a corruption in the black community that's that's messing us up but as you notice that anybody that come in this system is successful it becomes successful you know what i mean because there's so much things that this system created and we know that black americans had a lot to do with it but like i said in my last video video nobody gives a fuck you know what i'm saying the world don't care about that you can say that all you want the world don't give a fuck what what you did out of slavery and what you, you helped build this country because they still gonna come over here to America and they still go buy down to the niggas that's running it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if black people was running this country and running everything and they were the one um, letting people in and letting people uh, document people from all these countries that came over here, from even the white ones from Australia, from, from
from uh, Europe, Spain, all these people from Russia, Ukraine, uh, all these Arab people that we see that's running a lot of these cities that we're in now, like Glendale and LA. When you go to Glendale, that's all ran ran by the Arabs, the Arabs. You know what I'm saying? All the most of the, all the gas stations, all the Mercedes Benz dealers, all the Ferrari Benz, all the Ferrari dealers, all the car dealers is mostly ran by them. You know what I'm saying? So if you can say, if you were the person that let them in, yeah, they're gonna buy down to you for that. But they're not gonna buy down for you saying that you. Uh, built this and you did that and you did this and then when they look at you you at the bottom there's no way they're gonna do that so but me as a black man i i gotta give props what props is due because i know that we oppress people you know what i mean so I, I i gotta say yeah i look at it as to where where those are superheroes you know what i mean those ancestors were superheroes but but the world don't give a fuck so when you guys say that and say that and you try to uh shun other uh, other people you got to also remember that those other people that came from these different countries then then wasn't around a system wasn't around a financial system they had to do everything on their own and if black americans weren't in the system the question is is would america be america without the european coming over here would the black would black have black people would have created this not and, I, and I, i'm gonna strongly say i doubt it because um uh, um black folks would have never let no other immigrants in they would have never uh created something to where other people could come in they would have never created an empire we were always tribal people so we would have never created a united states you know what i'm saying they can't they didn't even do that shit in africa homie look how big is africa they didn't none of the states over there are united none of the countries are united they all still separate over there even in the caribbean so how all of a sudden we got once all the blacks around the of the world is doing one thing, but then we got these one set of black people that's, that would have did this and did that. You know what I mean? So stop that shit, man. You, it would have been the same thing. Y'all would have been your own independent country and y'all would have been living on your own. And it would have, if, if, if put the shove, if black people would have got released out of slavery and put on one side of America and out the system of America, y'all would have just had y'all, it would have just been a, another country over there. You know what I'm saying? So um so miss me with all that shit that um y'all better than everybody else you know what i'm saying because if if, if the caribbean would have switched places with black americans and it would have most likely been the same outcome because we the same people we all hopped off the same fucking boats you know what i'm saying we got the same abilities you know what i'm saying like i had a debate with a dude and he say oh we created michael jordan's we this and that and that and then i say well now now because if you starting to see that when they created sports and then they had sports uh, um, as a big uh, uh, event in America. They had money behind them. They had all these things to create this stuff. Other countries couldn't create that. In the 80s and the 90s, we had people like Magic Johnson dominating. We had all these other people dominating. Uh, people were still shut out. You know what I'm saying? These are bad. And I'm talking about basketball. But as we hit the 2000s and the 2005s, in 2005 and up, we start to see a lot of Africans come in. We start to see a lot of Caribbeans come in. Caribbean is saying a lot of people don't even know that Kevin Garnett is Caribbean. People don't even know that Shaquille O'Neal is Caribbean descent. What matter of fact, one of my folks that play that play in a band every year, they they go and play reggae at a uh, Shaq house um, every year for his birthday. You know what I'm saying? They go play live reggae shit. You know what I'm saying? So. A lot of people don't even know that he got Caribbean descent in him. And, and it's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? So when you say that you guys, when I had a, a debate with this guy, he said, oh, we created, we had Michael Jordan and nobody can do stuff like us. And I say, well, they can. It's just that they wasn't put on a big stage like everybody else. But now that everybody is getting put on the stage, like now we're starting to see African, Afro Beach. We're starting to see a lot of dancers on TikTok. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of Africans, women that's beautiful as hell. Uh, dancing to their music like whoa i mean the gang of them we didn't see that before we never got to see that side so now that they on the stage with us with everybody else is like okay oh they got it popping too oh they they they, they doing some shit too they can move too they can f run fast too jamaica got most of the fast runners uh you know what i'm saying so we all what i'm saying is that we all have the same abilities honey ain't nobody the guy ain't nobody special we got the same abilities uh the ufc is being dominated by nigerians right now because they're getting put on a big stage. They've been had those those dudes over there, but they they weren't able to get put on that stage and come over here and get put in this arena. But now that the arena is bigger, the, the UFC got bigger, they able to go to Africa and go to these different places and pull fighters from these places. 
and they coming to find out. And we got all three champions in in, in heavyweight, middleweight, and welterweight is uh, African. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? Um, we got uh, we got uh, what's his name? Jones. Jones is a uh, is a black African American. You know what I'm saying? He dominated. I don't think no, none of them could beat him. But but that but I say that to say that um they still dominate. You know what I mean? They still dominate. Uh, in certain areas in the NBA, look at all those. Look at all these Africans now in the NBA, and all these Caribbeans is balling in the NBA like the top players. You know what I mean? Because the the stage has opened up for them. So we have the same ability. Now ain't nobody special, bro. That's why I say when people come into this this system, this is why they could come into the system and be successful like anybody else be su- uh, be successful. There's no way that you can say um, that um, that we jumped off the boat together. But then you went this way and I went that way. And then you just became a different entity because um, um, all of a sudden, even though me and you, we were brothers, I went over here, started this whole fam- civilization family with my with my gene and you went over here, but we brothers. So we, we actually share, our, our family share DNA. We just, when I was a slave, I got put o- I got put over here and I went to Jamaica. You got, you got, you got shipped to, you went through this North Carolina and got shipped to America, but we are different. You see that stuff? So when you start to really think about it, you'll go deep into it and then you'll realize that we, especially people from the Caribbean, we are actually cousins and brothers and have shared the same DNA. We got split up. You know what I mean? We got split up and that's a fact. You know what I mean? But to kill that, they have to say now that they were um, already here. But yet, the majority of blacks in the in the Americas are in the in in the South, in the Caribbean, the South South America, all the way down to Brazil and all the islands. The smallest amount of blacks is in America. So, the majority of blacks that that live south of the border came off a ship, and then a small amount of blacks that lives in America, no evidence, were here already. And I hear stories about where I'm from, Belize, and my 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 my, my family is Garifuna, my father's Garifuna, Garifuna, and they say that they were here already with the Tainos and all that stuff, right? But when I did the research, I see that we really mixed in with the Tainos when we was fighting the war, jumping island from island, stealing, uh, you know, taking taking ships over, pir- being pirates, taking ships over, and uh, that's how we got our that's how they got the weapons to fight the Britons, the Br- the British. Before um before they um before we got our numbers got so low through the war that you know what I'm saying we settled on Belize and Honduras you know what I'm saying but we we started on the Virgin Islands we were jumping from island to island fighting until we ended up in, in, in uh, on the mainland you know what I mean so it's it's so I mean it's so much history that people gotta know before they get on here and I noticed that a lot of people act like children they get on here and act like kids. Grown people, man, arguing about what people said about the about, about them, what they say about me, what they and we we and the crazy thing is, is that it's so much stuff going on in real life for grown people to be on here arguing. I man, I, I heard I, I seen a whole show. It was a dude, dude named Knock Kneezy, to where he was just showing Africa people with with plates in their lips. I mean, he did a whole show, man. And I went there because I seen a dude in the comments say, um, he said, man, this dude named Nagneezy is live going going in on the Africans. And I went to the dude page and I said, let me see. Man, he talking about Africans eating this and they doing this. I mean, and I heard women like, yeah, and they say this and they want to, and they talk about they better than us. Huh? They all laughing. I'm like, what? And I'm like, this can't be grown people right now. This can't be grown folks. It's like, most of these people, the FBA in particular, have the mentality, and you can go look at my comments, they have the mentality of 15-year-olds. This is the this is the world we living in today, is that black men and black women in their 40s, some even in their 50s, man, act like they're act like they have the mentality of a 15, like they teenagers, man. And we can see that on Instagram. You see these bitches with gray hair now taking pictures like they little girls. They in packs taking pictures like they little kids. Man at the club with gray beards with young niggas trying to be a young nigga. You know what I mean? This is the mentality that we have. So this is what I'm seeing. When I when I when I hear this this rhetoric 
and I see niggas arguing back and forth, and I see niggas going in on people like, it's like hurt people hurt people. It's like, damn, these niggas must be hurt. Because they just steady going in, nonstop. This, man, this shit been going on for three years straight. What kind of shit is this? If you talk about something, the issue, okay, we y'all talked about it, we know it's there. But when you constantly just pound on it, oh, this and that, and then pound on it, and then pound on it, and then pound on it, it's something there that's wrong. It's something there that's wrong. But yet you looking at them and telling them they the ones that's wrong. But we got three years of people talking about the same situation, pounding it. This is why you're starting to see all these old, older folks in the club, these older females fucking these young niggas, they son age and going out and, and you know what I'm saying, try to be young bitches. I, I see the picture. When I seen the picture on the Facebook, man, my, my wife people's, I might go over and, and you know what I'm saying, say who they are, but man, I see, man, all these bitches in their 40s, they, they like seven of them, they taking pictures and they going, kneeling down like they like they love young girls. I said, man, they, they should be at home taking care of their kids, man. This is why these motherfuckers ain't got no nigga, no man. This is, they still try to be out here like they fucking young bitches. So I'm just telling the truth on that, man. So that's, you know what I'm saying? So that's some of the things that I noticed. That a lot of that a lot of people, we have people on this internet that's that have a kid mentality and they're fussing and crying like little kids instead of being adults. They crying like little kids and they sitting here arguing, oh this and that, y'all see, they say this about us and okay, we built this and we created hip hop and all. it it got to a point to where these niggas are so crazy now that they don't even want to give nobody else credit. You know what I'm saying? Like I heard Tariq say, Nas, he, he said, oh yeah, the, the best rappers. He named all foundational rappers, man. He didn't even name nobody else. He like, yeah, not serious. I was like, man, I said, something wrong with these dudes, man. I said, so it, it, it's now it's to a point they're not going to give nobody else credit for nothing. That's the point because they want to, they feel hurt to where they have to say, we the ones that's doing this, we this and we that. So, so now it gets to a point to where they not going to African Ben Bada and, and Jam Master J and all these guys that 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 helped start hip hop. They they go around that just to 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 they don't want to get any they don't want to get him credit. So they have to say, oh, Jane Brown started hip hop, this and that, and then they don't even want. That's how bad it is. They don't. Next thing you know, it's going to be Usain Bolt. Uh, uh, he, he he. Only reason he ran so fast is because of this and it, it, it starts to turn into things like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you know what I mean, it's gonna be to where they don't want to give nobody else credit. It got to that point, and people don't even know where R and B came from, the rhythm and blues. And y'all can do research on this. That came from Puerto Rico. The the uh, the, the 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 slow sounding uh, 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 music that that they got from Puerto Rico. For Africans in Puerto Rico that they created that. But y'all don't wanna, y'all might be like, hell no, he didn't create that. All right, go look it up and see where that sound came from in the early 1920s, 30s. So it's, it's so many things that these they they just the the followers of, of FBA Tariq Nasheed is very misinformed about so many things. It gets to a point to where I've seen another dude do a whole segment on who created hip hop and all this stuff and you know what I mean but it, 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 it to where he basically tried to take the credit away so even if African Ben Bada and Jam Master J and all these other other dudes or whatever they, uh, 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 all the, I, mean, I can't even remember their names but all these other dudes did bringing out big speakers and pushing it and making it into a big entity what it is these dudes are trying not to get these guys any credit just because they from they, just because they from the Caribbean that's how sad this shit got, bro. But at first, I, these dudes was always, especially to I heard Tariq talk about, oh yeah, we created hip hop black. And he, I heard, man, I got, man, I got, I need to find that video to where he named all those same dudes that he said didn't create hip hop. He named them. Now all of a sudden, they not, they didn't create hip hop. He named those same dudes. They called the um, Magnificent Four that created hip hop. All of a sudden, oh yeah, they didn't, they. they Oh yeah, they didn't do this because they got the sound from Dre Brown. They got the sound. I'm like, man, I said, dude, this shit is getting worse and worse, man. These dudes, I mean, they gonna look at this shit. This is the sad part about it. They gonna look at this shit five years from now, ten years from now, and they gonna be like, God damn, I was a dumbass nigga with this one. You know what I'm saying? Because people gonna remember this shit. This shit ain't gonna go away. People gonna always say, okay, yeah, um, I'm not working with this guy because look at the history of what this dude did. 
look at the history. Look what he's doing. Matter of fact, let's pull up these videos of what he was talking about. He might have a dude that want to donate nigga twenty million dollars to to his foundation. You know what I'm saying? From Nigeria, then he go back and see his old videos talking shit about Africans. This how dumb these niggas is, bro. But I just wanted to get that out, man, and I'm out. Peace.